Everyone, thank you very much for tuning in for this episode. My name is Luke, this is the Outdoor Gear Review. Today, I'm discussing with you all bivy sacks, what they are, when to use them, why to use them, why not to, pros and cons, and more. This is a topic of conversation that I've received a lot of questions about, and in this episode, I should be able to answer most of them, if not all of them. And to start off, we might as well talk about what exactly a bivy is. In my opinion, a bivy is a tool. Just like any tool, a bivy has a place and a time to use it. With a bivy being a tool, and there being a right time and a right place to use it, that is true with most pieces of gear. But when it comes to a bivy, it's especially true, as these are very polarizing in terms of use. They could be amazing in certain situations or absolutely terrible in others. Bivy sack, also known as bivouac sack, these were invented to serve climbers who wanted and needed ultra light emergency protection for their sleep systems when they were out for an ascent. Originally, bivy sacks were nothing more than a nylon shell that was essentially waterproof but it really offered nothing more than that. It was quick protection from a quick rain or snow event that allowed you to essentially make camp anywhere in places that you couldn't even imagine doing so that were impossible with a tent. Since their creation, bivvies have evolved. The technology has changed and people are using them for all sorts of reasons, including military forces all around the world. Think of a bivy as a single wall tent because that is what they are. There are many different types, they have different types of opening, different materials, and I will discuss that with you here in just a minute. Here on the Outdoor Gear Review, you all have seen me use bivvies over the years in numerous types of situations. My experiences with bivvies go back decades. And originally, I was taking trash bags and I was pulling them up over my feet, over my sleep system, and tearing a hole in the bottom and pulling them down to overlap. I've used them in freezing rain, in sleet, and snow, very, very cold conditions down below zero. You all have seen me use them on hot summer nights, and so on. I have used bivvies in just about every condition imaginable, and I have quite a bit of information to share with you all. Here on this tarp, we have three different types of bivy. We have full protection bivvies, partial protection, and limited protection bivvies. This right here is a simple nylon shell, and this is really to protect you from like splashing, right? You have this underneath the tarp, maybe it's raining, the wind's blowing a little bit, and water's splashing up on your bivy. This protects your sleep system. Then we have something here that's a little bit more robust. This is a military sleep system. This is made from Gore-Tex. It's quite a bit heavier than this nylon one. And this will offer you a lot more protection than a nylon bivy. Now the thing is, this zips up, it can be cinched up, but it's not 100% secure. And that's because bugs can crawl in with this type of bivy. Then we have the Black Diamond bivy, which offers you 100% protection. It's waterproof, and also it can be zipped up 100% to prevent bugs from getting in and whatnot. With these three bivvies, we have structured and non-structured bivvies. You're asking yourself, what does that mean? With the yellow black diamond bivvy, that one has a metal wire in it, right? It's a little bit bigger than the others. And with that metal wire, you can pull that material away from your face, right? It has a structure to it. The other two are simple bivvy sacks. They are non-structured. The material, if you're inside of this thing, will simply lay on you. Another difference when it comes to bivvies is fabric. We've touched upon this already, just a little bit. You have nylon, you have Gore-Tex, and you have other materials out there. Gore-Tex tends to be the most expensive and also the heaviest, and also the most breathable. The next thing that we need to talk about when it comes to a bivy are the openings, because they are different on every single model. Some are easy to get into, some are not. Some you can hop in from the side, some you have to crawl in from the front. With this Mammut bivy, you have to crawl in this way. With the military Gore-Tex bivy, it has a side zipper, which allows you to get in from the side. And then of course there are bivvies which you can access from the side or you can crawl in. Now, let's talk about weight here for a second because it's very important. This Mammut bivy weighs less than a pound. It's ultra light. The yellow black diamond bivy is around two pounds. This Gore-Tex bivy, I don't remember specifically, but I want to say it's over two pounds, two and a half pounds, maybe three pounds, something like that. That is heavier than an ultra light tent. And that brings us to our next point. When bivvies came along, the selling point was that they were ultra light. Well, since then, things have changed. The materials have changed. You have tents that are ultra light, that are the same weight as many of these bivvies. So that selling point is no longer a key factor. The most important benefit to a bivy is that it allows you to set up very quickly in places where you couldn't set up a tent. 
You could do it on a rocky face. You could do it next to a wall. You could do it in a place where tent stakes would not be able to penetrate the ground, and so on. As I mentioned at the beginning of this episode, there's a time and a place to use a bivy. There are pros and cons to using a bivy, and I would like to discuss those with you now, starting with the pros. First off, in the wintertime, a bivy can add as much as 10 degrees to your sleep system, which is awesome in the wintertime. You can go out for a zero degree trip, you can bring a zero degree bag, you put this over your sleeping bag, and now you have a negative 10 sleeping bag. In other words, you are going to stay warmer. Also, they block the wind extremely well. And as I mentioned before, they are super easy to set up. If you see weather coming in, you can hop in in a matter of seconds. Another huge pro, which I mentioned before, is that you can set them up anywhere. And those, my friends, primarily are the pros for using a bivy. What about the cons? Now, with this type of tool, with this type of gear, there are many cons associated with it. So you have to keep these in mind when planning your adventure. First off, for rainy conditions, these are not very good. You will have to use a tarp with these. Why is that? That's because as soon as you open this thing up, everything inside is going to get wet. There's no way to crawl out of a bivy without everything on the inside getting wet. Next up, bivvies can add 10 degrees to your sleep system. In the summertime, is that a good thing? Is that something that you want? You have to plan for this. What happens if you get hot? You sweat. With a bivy, this is a single wall tent that is essentially laying on top of you. So condensation is a major problem with a bivy. It doesn't really matter what type of material that you have because no material is 100% breathable. If you are going to sleep in a bivy, it doesn't matter if it's in the wintertime or if it's in the summertime, the odds are you are going to wake up damp. Your sleeping bag is going to be damp. The bivy itself is going to be damp. This presents unique problems that you have to address. If this is a quick overnight trip, no big deal. Go home, dry everything out. If this is a multi-day trip, you have to take time. You have to dry your bag. You have to dry the bivy stack as well. All of this takes time. This takes time away from your adventure and what your plans are. Next, you have to think about bugs. If your bivy stack zips up 100%, awesome, no bugs. But that means that your head is inside of the bivy. And when you are inside of a shelter, you're breathing, you are releasing moisture, and that moisture will collect on the bivy itself. If your bivy sack doesn't zip up 100%, then you have to contend with bugs. What's your solution? Next up, you have to talk about space. Bivvies are very, very confined. There are some larger ones out there. There are some that are more of tents. I'm not talking about those in this episode because they really are more tent than bivy. When you put in your sleeping bag inside of your bivy, you crawl in, you will realize and you will see just how tight and confined it is. Generally, with a bivy, there's not enough room to put your gear inside of there. You will have enough room in there for your cell phone, a battery pack. If you love being confined and having limited space, you will love a bivy. Most people don't like feeling that way. And with that being said, make sure to consider that before you go out and purchase one. If you're somebody who has always spent their time sleeping in a tent, having plenty of room, it can take quite a bit of time to get accustomed to sleeping in one of these. The next thing that you need to think about in regards to a bivy is price. Some can be very inexpensive or some can be very expensive. Some bivvies, two, three hundred dollars, or you could go very cheap. I bought this one used off of eBay and I paid like twenty dollars for it, something like that. These military ones, they used to be very inexpensive. I'm not really sure what they are now. I haven't looked in a while. To wrap up this video, let's talk about my experiences, my thoughts, when I use them, when I don't. I love using bivvies in the wintertime. It makes my sleep system warmer. It blocks the wind. And if snow is flying around, if snow's making it underneath my tarp, no big deal, I'm staying dry. In the summertime, they're too hot, I tell you. Your body's releasing heat. It's releasing moisture. You have your sleeping pad. You probably won't even have a blanket or a sleeping bag because that's just too hot. And if you sweat, your sweat will gather on the inside of that bivy and make you even more damp. There's a place and a time to use them for very, very quick trips in dry, arid environments, sure. For through hikes, I wouldn't recommend them. For areas that receive a lot of rain, I wouldn't recommend them. For humid areas in the summertime, in the spring, I would not recommend it. If you take these out with you and there's a chance of rain, bring a good tarp with you. You can use some of these without a tarp. Some are 100% waterproof, but they are designed to be used with like short duration rain events, not prolonged ones. And as I discussed earlier, 
if you have to get out and it's raining, what are you going to do? Vivis can truly put your skills to the test in regards to the elements. So you need to plan ahead. And folks, that pretty much wraps it up. I've gone over what bivvies are, what they are for, how to use them, when I don't recommend using them, when I do. I would love to hear from you all. Do you like using bivvies? And if you do, when do you personally use them and when do you not? Everyone, take care, strength and honor. See you all around.